Welcome back to the channel everybody. I am Flash. Thank you for joining me for another Marvel Snap video. And as always, it is another week and another week of the stream team. And we have three more decks in this video to showcase from our good friend Glazer over our Snap Judgments. Let's get right into the decks. All right, first deck up is the Riku Gilgamesh Patriot deck. Um, it's a pretty standard Patriot deck. It has a couple of variances here with naturally Gilgamesh and with Pixie. It's a fine build. It, a, Like I said, it's a very standard, straightforward Patriot deck with Pixie sprinkled in for just that little bit of extra oomph, right? Where you might be able to get a one cost or a zero cost Gilgamesh or Claw Onslaught, something like that. You know what all those decks do in a vacuum. Also, Super Giant is in here to give you that Super Giant on four into Gilgamesh on turn five. if And then just kind of do all the rest of the things you need to do on that last turn whether it be blue marvel or whatever else you understand you get the point let's get to the next one this next deck pardon me <laughs> is the bbak surfer deck uh that i believe they hit number two with on the infinite leaderboard if i'm not mistaken you know laser had all that stuff i missed some in between in between the lines but it is what it is another pretty much standard surfer build uh this one has Cosmo in it, which is one of those things. It also has Mobius, but it's one of those things that um, I often toy with with a lot of decks where it's like, well, can we fit in a Cosmo to protect some things? Probably. And in a Surfer deck, Cosmo costs three. So if you put in, if you have Cosmo and you have Cosmo protecting your uh, Shaw, which pretty much is what you want here, because otherwise that's what. There is nothing else like Mockingbird doesn't need protecting. She's nine. She can't be shonged. But Shaw gets huge and protection for Shaw is very good. Plus Cosmo benefits from the buff surfer. You can insert absorbing man the surfer. It goes nutty. It's a standard build. It's very good. Just play it on to the next one. And the last one we have here is Slayer Blade version 234.6. I have no idea what that means because again, I forgot. Like when I watch it, like sometimes I watch the videos and then like I always watch the videos when Glazer posts them. But like some of the details get lost in my brain, especially throughout the course of the day. But this is my favorite of the three. As soon as I looked at them, I'm like, yeah, this one right here fits my play style. And it's safety, right? Safety Blade, put the Slayer Blade archetype into place. The Angela Kitty package is one of the strongest packages in the game and my rankings for this month I already have Thena as the top card for this month um this is a very strong card in this build we played with some of this those of you that were came by my stream we had a lot of fun this was clearing away the best deck of the three and my favorite of the three before I had even touched any of them um and to be fair playing this build I don't even think we played Enchantress not one time in the games that we played. That's how strong the rest of this deck is. Um, but she's good variant. She good. She helps you out with a lot of opposing ongoing things. You'll see. You'll see how good this deck is when we get it in action. Let's get to some gameplay. All right. So we're gonna go in the order that we spoke about the decks. And for me, it's all. It's also in the order of least to most favorite. <laughs> Squirrel Girl on turn one here, easy. It's not that I dislike the Patriot archetype in general. I do like this. And this is good. You're getting Squirrel Girl out early. Um, it helps to get priority and just allow you to do other things. But it's that, I, and the Riku decks especially, I've realized that that style that they have their builds and we got pixie here on turn two so hopefully we can hit something good i don't love pixie i had some rants about pixie during the stream and those of you that were there will, you know can attest to that but i think the card is way too random to be good it's fun sometimes but there's too much happening oh we finally get a zero cost onslaught wow we're not playing that until the last turn of the game um i'm also good with just going mobius here it's not particularly necessary but why not I, 
and they discard the Hella, and there's a good chance that they retreat because when they discard Hella, they don't want any part of the rest of that game, but we'll see what happens. Okay, they're, they're continuing. Felix, I don't know if Felix is a bot or not, but usually the Hella players are gone out of there once Hella gets discarded. Unless they have Ghost Rider, which sometimes happens. Ugh. Mobius helps us though. See, Mobius, which is what I forgot to mention in the quick uh, layout of the deck, right? The deck breakdown. Mobius fixes your pixie problem. So, see, Mystique would have been a five cost, but because of Mobius, it takes it back to three. Um, yeah, we're just going to Mystique the Patriot straight away into Blue Marvel uh, Onslaught. Right, we mystique the Patriot here, and then we're next turn we're gonna blue marvel in the right lane with onslaught, wasp in the middle lane, and we should just kind of win after that. We're not gonna snap now. Granted, this is normally a snap condition. Now, if you are certain, especially if your opponent's not like this is a hella deck, they're not playing the counters. So I would have thousand percent have snapped already. Especially considering that they don't have Hella. Okay, so we even have now the Ultron that we can play instead of Blue Marvel. So here's where we can go Onslaught. Just, we don't even have to, like I said, we don't have to go Blue Marvel. We just go straight away into Ultron and that should just about do it. Let me sure count my, make sure my ducks are all lined up here. In fact, we can even put Onslaught, I'm sorry, not Onslaught, we can even put Alt, Alt, Ultron in the middle lane to help with the power situation. This seems good, let's go ahead and rip it. Behold my mighty hand. Behold my mighty hand. Ultron also breaks the game. So th those, those board filling, uh, like, card effects seems to be crashing the game and we lost maybe that wasn't the right order of operations maybe we should have gone see I didn't realize the drones were gonna be nine okay so we probably should have went I guess it wouldn't have mattered either way right maybe blue marvel was the play somebody knows but some of these effects have been crashing the game. This one, the debris one has been doing it as well. Let's get another game and let's see let's see how we go from there. You know, in all the games we had played on stream with this deck, I didn't get a zero cost or a low cost onslaught not one time. And the one time it happens, we still end up losing. It's fascinating how that works out. All right, let's get Squirrel Girl down again. We got Pixie again ready to go on turn two. <clears throat> and from there... Then you just kind of see what happens. The play pattern immediately changes once you play Pixie. Decks like this, well, most decks, have a what to do on each turn. When you're playing Pixie and you can play her on turn two, you're throwing that out the window. <laughs> the plan is what did Pixie hit and not what did she flip? That's what the plan becomes. See, we got a five cross Ultron, not bad there. Um. I'm not going to play another Squirrel Girl. I'm good on that. I don't want to. I don't want to muck the board up even more. I'm fine with maybe playing Super Giant next turn into it. It really doesn't matter. It could be Claw. It could be Blue Marvel. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me play the Psylocke. Okay. Okay. Currently, Super Giant is still the play. Okay, zero cost Gilgamesh, very good. So here's the plan. We go Super Giant on this turn. Right? And then we go Gilgamesh, turn five. It doesn't, again, specifically have to be Gilgamesh, but. And they snap. Super Giant probably messes them up. I'm not 100% sure what it is they're doing, or if that's that could, that could be a bot, but you know who knows. Uh, so we played Gilgamesh this turn, and we could play something else with it. Doesn't just have to be Gilgamesh alone. We could go Gilgamesh, and we have options. It could be Ultron. It could be Claw. It could be Blue Marvel. Um, I'm thinking.
I'm thinking claw. Yeah, I like claw here. And then last turn, blue marvel into squirrel girl, right? Onslaught is an option, but I think blue marvel into squirrel girl is the play. We get the buff for everything. Gilgamesh gets big. Should work out. I think... Let's put... This... And do this. I think that's what we want. <laughs> Sometimes you have to really... Again, Pixie changes your, your order of operations. Devil Dinosaur, you don't see that too often. Giving super bot vibes. Uh, I think that's enough, huh? We'll see what that, that card is in the left lane. White Tiger. Hmm. Not bad. Flips into. Jubilee into. Wolfsbane. Wow, that is pretty damn good. Standard Odin Wong stuff type stuff. But Gil Gilgamesh takes us over the top. I mean, a 516. It's not bad. Not bad at all. You know, you play your cards right with this deck, it's sneaky good, it can steal you some wins, just like you saw there. Um, I, again, it's not my favorite of the group, but in these couple of games, this is the best it performed <laughs> the entire time I played the deck. So, there you have it. <laughs> Let's get to the next deck. Okay, the BBAK Surfer deck is up. Again... Very standard surfer deck, very strong in the right hands. Put the Shaw under Cosmo and go to town. And now, granted, that's not always going to be necessary, but if you pull it off, you get it to work. Because more times than not, you're going to want to be playing Brood or Shaw on turn three. And if you whiff on that, then, you know. But again, if Cosmo presents itself as the best option, then play the Cosmo. Again, Hope is another card that you could be playing on turn three. Mobius, if they're playing, like if they put Ravona down on turn two, you kind of force your hand to play the Mobius on turn three, regardless of whatever else you have in hand. Like I got, the, you know, I didn't get Forge to play on turn two, but... We're just going to go into Shaw and go from there. Now, this is tough because for a couple of reasons. The first reason being most of the deck we're not going to be able to play in the middle lane. So we're going to be very strapped on space. So I'm leaning Cosmo, right, into... Um, this is tough because if I play the Cosmo, that removes a location where I can play Surfer. And because I'm limited on space, I'm not sure I can afford to do that. So they're playing High Evo. Okay, we can go Forge into Brood next turn, which is good. Let's go ahead and get Mobius down right now. <laughs> Because uh, if you know everything about High Evo, you know they want to float. You know they want to play cheap She-Hulks or an Abomination or whatever Shocker just hit. Go ahead and get that Mobius down as soon as you can. Which for us is now turn three. There's the Enchantress. They burn that Enchantress a little early. This is right now snap condition, right? But I'm not going to snap for the sake of the video. Okay. Um... Like I said, we're going to want to go Forge into Brood here. Now, oh boy. Okay, we're fine. We'll go Forge into Brood. Um, we're going to have to pretty much abandon middle lane. Unfortunately. Red Guardian. That sucks. There goes our Mobius. But the good part about that is that we've already stopped them from doing the I'm going to float and get a cheap thing. So we're good. Like the job has been done by Mobius. Yeah, it's already too late. They've conceded. And we 
we have a whole lane that we couldn't play any cards into. So, again, that's the strength of this deck. Okay, one more with this deck. I'm trying to do my best to get, like, these videos to not be 30 plus minutes long. But, like, three decks and it's, like, two games with each deck. It's, like, it runs in a lot. And it's, like, I'm cutting the stuff out, right? It's not like I'm just, like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> pull the curtain back we have fun we have fun gaming with flash one of the vm vnmz boys peeps crew people whoever um that some i think streamer i think brazilian somebody's told me that people like him and they just use his tag jeff's gone i don't know jeff's is not necessary in this deck specifically i mean I, jeff is just jeff jeff is just good just goes in a lot of places uh we go forge next turn uh oh instinctively see i almost snap right there i was like i'll oh, snap let's but uh no we're not gonna snap there we're gonna go forge into shaw uh under wakanda right because unless they have shadow king which you're not seeing a lot of right now. People are not running Shadow King like that. Until Sarah Control rears her head. Okay, well there's magic. Now, if we can get Cosmo out, there's this extra turn now that we're playing with. Funny that they didn't do Machine World. That's interesting. Um, That would have been my bet. It's, hmm. Okay, let's go... Okay, now we have real real decisions to make here. Because if we give them brood. I'm going to play the brood. Unfortunately, I have to play them into machine world and give them. I just I want the cheaper. I want the cheap mockingbird and we're going to have to. OK, we get the surfer effect, which we like that for sure. Um, impeccable timing. See, good thing we got the brood down. So we don't mind that. Surfer gets destroyed and we we get more board space. We like that. Now we got to play Cosmo because we got to protect this Shaw. So Cosmo's got to go down here. This is normally where I would snap. For sure, this is a snap condition. Um, just in case they got Cods or Doc Ock. There you go. Shut that down right in its tracks. Um... Unfortunately, Absorbing Man can't hit anything, right? We've got Cosmo here. Um, Cosmo. We're going to pull Killmonger off the top, which is good. I mean, of course, unless they Baron Zemo and we lose. If they Baron Zemo, though, we still get the Killmonger effect. Still benefits us. So here's what we do. We're going to play Mockingbird middle with Hope. No, no, no. Wait. Here's what we do. No, 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 no. Hope and Mobius. Yeah, let's do that. Let's fight them. I mean, the power is going to be what it's going to be in the left lane anyway, so. Yeah. The Zemo pulls the Killmonger, but that benefits us so much. The beauty of having the deck tracker. We already knew what was up. You know, again, if we weren't playing for the sake of the channel, you know, content, I would have snapped on this so quick. Uh, we're going to play Mockingbird into Brood. Ah. I'm trying to think where else they're going to want to put power. Because they probably have... This deck usually also runs like Red Hulk and stuff like that, I think. I don't remember. It's doing the whole clog thing, right? Also, clog, um, thievery stuff. You don't fight for right, I don't think. Eh, I think we're fine. Or maybe we're not. Yeah, we lose, we lose the hope. Okay, well, what do they got right lane? Ooh, Shadow King. You know, 
We were just saying... <laughs> Not a lot of people were running Shadow King. And there's the Shadow King popping up in this random... I don't know what this deck is, but... It's a mixture of... Things. Answers. Slash... Zemo Mill stuff. Alright, let us move right on to the last deck. Okay, we got the Slayer Blade deck up. My favorite of the bunch. And quick housekeeping, if you are enjoying this, you're enjoying this content, you're enjoying the stream team, do me a huge favor. If you could like, subscribe to this channel here. Every week, I will be giving you... That should have played down the middle. <laughs> I'll be giving you this... The decks, you know, you get these videos on Wednesday. I mean, I'm sorry, Thursday. The stream is Wednesday for me. Um, I'm good with, I'm good with Angela. Let's go Angela here. That way, next turn, we can go Kitty, Thena. Um, yeah, just like this video. Throw me, you know, like I said, subscribe to my channel. Come back. We have this every week. Uh, I'm trying to incorporate... The other things slowly trying to get back to you know my regular release pattern um let's go oh man so many options Fina is so like hey yeah I I could all right let's go knock I don't know could be Galactus. I hate that idea. I hate the thought of that. That irks me so much. Okay, let's go Nocturne, Thena. You know what? Yeah, it's fine. I was gonna get TD in there too, but let's just get the buff on 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 uh, Athena. So yeah, I can see how that's in action, how that's working. Oh, uh, we don't mind Echo, cause we're not playing anything ongoing here except for Ravona and um, Prof. Interesting choice of filling here. This is weird. I, this is a strange grouping of cards here. Okay, um, I'm not sure what to do with this. This information is throwing me big time. Uh, let's move that, change that location. We're going to Kitty Sage, get the buff on Thena, get a big buff on Sage there. They for sure move the Jeff out now. Oh, I'm sorry, the Jeff. Forgot Nocturne was there also. Hub, Sabretooth, not bad. Vormir. Ooh, we could play Sabretooth on Vormir. W, snap condition. It's... Ooh, double sage. Definitely snap condition though. Dina is just so good. So good. So now we go uh we go kitty and sabertooth. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's just good value. Athena just continues to, to grow. If this is again, if this is a style that you're interested in, you're like, oh yeah, that's fascinating. Okay, so what do you do with the Jeff now though? You move the Jeff out to play what? Um, Odin? Hmm. In which case, we have to be careful. Because <laughs> uh, if they move the Jeff out to play Odin, Sage is going to be huge. And if we cannonball the Sage, that's... <sighs> the variance on where it falls is like, okay... They move the Jeff out. Where did they move the three power? Do they move it to the left lane? Probably. And then we have to flip a coin on... Mind you, I had this Enchantress sitting here. I could have played it on Wong. Don't... Don't remind me I misplayed that. Okay, here's what I think we do. Let's cannonball the Tiger. 
that'll send that over here and then unfortunately we're gonna have to dump the idea of getting it book all power on Thena and just say boom uh, kitty is it kitty or I guess it's kitty nuts to us if the Jeff goes left and Jeff went left <clears throat> yeah, we lose. It, it was a matter of... It could have gone either way, right? Yeah. The decision was, where do they move the Jeff? And I'm pretty sure I knew the Jeff was going left, but... It happens, it happens. If they had moved, if for some reason they moved the Jeff right, then we just win. All right, last one here. Um, let's go Kitty. We play the Ravona next turn on this one. Then we could play Ravona into Krakoa, get that extra three for the next card. Ant-Man screams bot, especially Ant-Man turn one with base art. <laughs> Uh, we just play Ravona here. Maybe we can bait the bot into snapping us. There's armor, perfect. We don't we don't mind that at all. We're just trying to destroy nothing in this deck, for the most part. Now, some of you will look at this, and we don't have Thena down, but we still have our plan of action, which is to go. Uh, what is our plan of action? Mm -hmm. This. Angela. Mm, Angela. Let's fight him for left. Because if we get the cannonball or if we get. We can get Prof down in the right lane. We can just go ahead and steal that. And fight for the left lane. There's Nocturne. Hmm. Kitty Nocturne is good here. So is just Professor X. Let's of course play Namor. We can still get, I mean, good. Hmm. Oh, we're good. Cause we go Kitty Nocturne. We can get pot. We can still get power into Kiln. They played nothing. Okay. So I just want to, I, I had to reiterate that it is a bot. This is also where I would probably snap back and try to scam the eight cubes out of the bot, but here we are. Uh, yeah, we definitely just move the Nocturne and go Enchantress Kitty. <laughs> just kind of, you know, sweep the rug up from under the bot. Um, sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. I instinctively snapped. <laughs> that just happened. I was hoping we could get a last second eight cube scam. And I think we may have just done it. <laughs> Man, if that's Destroyer. It's Mojo. Uh, but that's not going to be enough. We'll take the eight. Thank you, bot. <laughs> Thank you, Danky the bot. <laughs> all right let's close things out here y'all <laughs> okay everybody thank you for hanging out enjoying some time here with these three very good decks depending on what your play style is and what you enjoy playing you might have varying levels of success with these three decks but they are very three strong decks right now especially that slayer blade with the profex with the with the cannonball um and the angela kitty package with dina mm just very strong right now it, it combats one of the frustratingly thing you know like annoying things that's 
plagued the game for a long time, which is Hella. It pretty much shuts all that down and it beats a lot of other things as well. So enjoy this deck, enjoy having fun with this stuff. Like I said, please hit me with that like, subscribe, follow, share, do all that fun stuff. Check out the stream team. Make sure you're checking out Glazer and Snap Judgments because why wouldn't you be? You're getting six, seven days worth of content, goaded stuff, right? Getting all the best decks before they hit the streets, like in a vacuum. So make sure you're checking that out. And I'm Flash. Come check out my stream. We're going to be doing, by the time you see this, right, it's Thursday. And we're going to be doing Throwback Thursday. Come by my stream. Let's hang out. Enjoy some retro games. Have some fun. But as far as this stream goes, right, these deck goes, these videos, the stream team, I will catch y'all next week. Peace.